author of 20 novels, 17 New York Times bestsellers, over 10 million books in print, and published in over 25 languages. Please welcome Jane Green. Cheers. Cheers. This week, Jane and I are delighted to welcome two guests to talk some more about the hybrid publishing route of getting author's work published. A 20-year veteran of the traditional publishing industry, Brooke Warner is now publisher of hybrid publishing house She Writes Press. Former executive editor of Seal Press, Brooke is a TEDx speaker, is on the board of the Independent Book Publishers Association, and writes a monthly column for Publishers Weekly. And Cindy Eastman, a writer and an educator. Cindy speaks from her experience of having published her book, Flip Flops After 50, with She Writes Press. Hi, it's lovely to see you both, Brooke and Cindy. Hi. It's very nice to Hi. see you too. I want to ask, why is it She Writes? Why not They Write, We Write? <laughs> There's a man yeah. here. Right, no, uh, it's a legitimate question. I mean, it is yeah. a women's press. Uh, we do right. only publish women, and the platform originally SheWrites.com existed before the press, and it was a women's salon. And I also come out of female-centric publishing. I worked for a women-only publishing house for eight years before founding She Writes Press. And so uh, the reason that I partnered with She Writes was because it was a female-only platform. Good. So it was well, our, that our out way. Yes, yes. <laughs> and now I'd like to kind of throw the floor open to you to discuss Jane, in particular, bringing up She Writes, Cindy's experience of She Writes, and Brooks to explain what She Writes is. And I've got to put right up front, as the Westport Library welcomes all publishers and all books, it's not an endorsement for one way or another, but I do think it's a fascinating, very worthy conversation in these times of massive change in methodology of getting anything out to the audiences that have traditionally been done one way, it's happened in the music business. Clearly, it's happening in publishing. Um, so on that basis, welcome all. I think probably the easiest way would be if, Brooke, you explain She Writes, and then we tackle it, unless someone else feels differently, uh, with what perhaps Jane may have of questions after you say what it is from your point of view, and then Cindy being uh, someone that's experienced the process, what that experience was like. How does that sound? Perfect. Sounds good. 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 Uh, yeah, and, absolutely. And we, we have one little tradition first. Cheers. Oh. <laughs> Cheers. Cheers. Oh, yeah. I have my right on sister. Go you. Go uh, you. Yeah. <laughs> but it, in fairness, it's not five o'clock in California. So, Brooke, exactly. It's a water bottle. Cindy, Cindy, no excuse. No excuse. I bet there's whiskey in there. Anyway. I could just, like, I, honestly, I do have a bottle up here. <laughs> But, you know, it's way high up, so. I would keep that very private. <laughs> <laughs> I interrupted you. Brooke, go ahead. Tell us. Thank you. So, uh, yeah, you mentioned it's a, it's a non-traditional publishing model. And so what, that, what we call our model is hybrid publishing. And there are other terms for this kind of publishing out in the world. I mean, sometimes you might hear partnership publishing or co-publishing, but hybrid publishing has, I think, stuck with the industry as an understanding that this is a model by which the authors invest upfront in their publishing endeavor. Uh, but the actual business mechanics and sort of how we exist in the world um, favors authors in a lot of the ways that traditional publishing doesn't. And so, for instance, they get much higher royalties. Um, they have, I think, a greater creative control over their process. And then there are ways that we are also very unlike self-publishing, right? So just because the author is investing in their project, um, we are not a self-publishing entity. We vet the project, so we're very exclusive with what we accept. And our 
uh, production process of like the cover design and interior and editing and all of that stuff mirrors more of a traditional publishing option. So the authors, while they do have a lot of creative control in the process, are it's not a self-publishing endeavor where they're just doing whatever they want. You know, we are a publishing house that is very invested in the books that we're putting out and our brand and our cover designs and all of that. Um, and I, the, the last most important thing to say about it is that we have traditional distribution. And so what that means is that the books actually get into libraries and bookstores and uh, trade channels in ways that self-published authors can't. And so it truly is a blend and thus the word hybrid. Um, and, and it is and has been really successful for some authors as the uh, traditional barriers to publishing has have just in, continued to get increasingly higher and hard to penetrate. And I just want to say one last word on that, which is that there these traditional barriers that exist exist mainly because authors don't have the right platform or brand or celebrity and it's not because of their writing and that was really my reason for founding she writes press in the first place was because i saw all of these amazing books that in my last role i was an acquiring editor at a traditional house i was rejecting all of these books not for the books, you know, they were amazing and great. It was because the authors didn't have the kind of following that we needed to justify the publication. And so I found, uh, you know, great satisfaction in being able to publish these books that are excellent and worthy and gorgeous stories that can't find their way in the traditional world um, simply because the traditional world is pretty myopic and, and kind of closed off to, frankly, almost anyone who doesn't have quite a large following. So I think I've got to throw that to Jane. Um, well, I, I, I find the whole thing fascinating. I, I have a question for Brooke about sales and distribution. Do you use a team with one of the houses? Because I know some, self, some people who self-publish do that, or do you have your own sales reps? We do have our own sales reps, but it's through Ingram Publisher Services, right? They're one of the largest distribution companies in the world. I mean, they're the largest sort of book entity in the United States, for sure. Uh, but Ingram has a traditional distribution arm, which is separate from all of their self-publishing and their wholesaling. And so we have their sales force that goes out on behalf of our books and sells our books into the market. So one of the things that I've observed recently, particularly with She Writes Press, is the covers are, are so beautiful. You, you actually can't tell. And that's always been the great signifier. You've always known what a self-published book is. And, and this hybrid method of publishing is, it seems to be working. And, and I was at a, a Christmas book fair with Zibby Owens at her home. Mm -hmm. Mums don't have time to read books. And honestly, a, a huge percentage of the books that she had at her book fair and the authors that were there were published by She Writes Press. So um, I, I, find, <laughs> I, well, I, I think it's just so interesting because the world is changing and publishing is a very old industry. And, and I think it's uh, been slow to catch up with, with how different the world is. Tell me about your marketing, because I know you have, is it Crystal who does the marketing there? So, I mean, in, in keeping with the sort of non-traditional structure that we operate within, uh, Crystal is the CEO of our company and she owns she writes and she writes press and also book sparks which is its own entity and so uh, our authors can use book sparks for publicity but they're not required to and so in that sense we have um you know we, we kind of say it's you know it's the best of both worlds people can do a one-stop shop if they want to and be kind of all in-house but some people want to bring in their own publicist or they want to work with someone else. We want to give our authors a lot of um, agency, but we also want to kind of have a central hub, you know, so that's the way that we work. So basically authors um, do hire their own publicity entity and one of those entities is BookSparks. 
So the out the initial outlay is going to be higher if you go with your model, but mm -hmm. the rewards are it, it seems like the rewards are potentially greater. They are potentially greater. I mean, I think what happens in traditional publishing more often than not is, I mean, either an author will get an advance that never earns out. And I mean, at least you got the advance. There's nothing wrong with taking a chunk of money, right? Um, but uh, m more often what we're seeing right now is zero advance, you know, or um, you know, models that seem like they're not in fact favorable to the author because we're giving the authors 60% of their royalties on print and 70% um, on their eBooks. And so the potential for earn out is higher. It doesn't mean that all of our authors do earn out, but I think that it gives them more agency. And for those authors who are more entrepreneurial, the, um, the potential reward is high. So, so just to co to give a comparison, a, a regular royalty payout would be with a with a traditional publisher would be around fifteen percent, right? Uh, and I believe for, uh, on traditional publishing and forty percent on eBooks. So that's huge. That, yeah, that I mean, and most so. ebook contracts that I see these days are still at twenty five percent. You know, they might there's a range, but yes, I mean, typically twenty five to forty percent. Um, so and we're giving seventy and. Um, 15 compared to 60 and so that is where the benefits come in you know that the authors the the royalty checks that we pay out look pretty favorable right and so your what you're getting if you were to go if you were to be accepted by she writes press um, what are you getting from she writes that you're not getting from from just putting it up on Amazon or or, or going down a very traditional self-publishing route the main thing is the access to the markets. You know, that, that pipeline into the marketplace is very closed off to self-published authors. So you can put your book up for sale and it will be on Amazon and that's fine. Um, and it will be available. You know, which means that if it's in the Ingram catalog, if you did the thing of uploading your book to Ingram Spark, it is technically available and a bookstore can call up or order and get a book. But our books are bring, being pre-sold into the market. And so we're getting, you know, pre-orders in the numbers of, you know, hundreds. And those books then are being placed into these various uh, channels. And then usually the result, of course, is more orders and more buys and we're getting into libraries and so it's about it really is about that supply chain and just kind of you know the difference between having a hose that's open <laughs> you know and and the books are going out into the marketplace versus self-publishing it's very complicated because anybody who wants that book they can get it but they usually have to work a little hard to get it and oftentimes the bookstores and the libraries they just don't want to they don't have the incentive right i i definitely having have spoken to people who have self-published it's just what they didn't anticipate was once you've you've got your book out there what do you do that no one's buying your friends buy it and then what it, it's right. the marketing the distribution that no one anticipates i'd love to ask cindy about her experience yeah. publishing with she writes well i i am um i was one of the early <laughs> early ones so um right before uh i published is when i guess you went with ingram sparks right so i got in on the, the traditional distribution which was amazing for me because i saw that my books were in a bookstore in south carolina and <laughs> in colorado which i would have never been able to achieve um, I really, I really liked the process. I liked that it was being vetted. Um, although I was surprised at the edits I received back because, you know, I'm a writer, you know, so, but, so, but we got, you know, copy. I have a question, Cindy, I'm going to stop you because I have yeah. a question about that. When you say you were surprised, were you, is it, was it your first novel to have been published with She Writes? Yes, yes. So, so I think it's a really common thing with your first book as a writer that you yes. think I'm a writer, these are my words, how dare anyone make suggestions to change them. And actually, I as a as a 25 year veteran, I, I think um you learn that if you're working with people you trust, it, they actually can make your work so so much better. 
I'm a big fan of editing and I, I recommend it and encourage it whenever I do a, a class or a workshop. I'm a big fan now. Um, but yes, I was surprised at first, but no, the whole process and the cover, um, you know, was beautiful. And, um, the it, book is called, I just want to jump in. The book is called flip flops after 50. Oh, I, I have it. Right. Show us. There we go. Are. <laughs> that marketing going on. Yeah. <laughs> um, I just happened to have it laying here. Um, now, now, right there, Cindy, is why sometimes people need someone else to go market the thing for them. You got to mention the name and show the cover. Yes, yeah, so that was that was hard for me. So, so I got I came in after the association with Ingram, um, Sparks Publishing, but before. Um, Books. Ingram Publisher Services, Ingram. I just want to clarify, because Ingram Spark is a self-publishing part of Ingram. So just for listeners, I want to make sure that's clear. Thank you. Um, so so after that, but before um, Spark Point, before the association with Crystal. So um, at the time, I did not choose, although I think there was still some sort of a marketing package available, I didn't choose to do it. But again, after having gone through this, I would probably choose to do that uh, because I think right now, you know, now, especially now because there are so many great books out there and it's just, it's nice to have somebody help you navigate those avenues um, to get it out there. But it was, um, my experience on the whole has been amazing. And that's, it's, you know, the whole working with Brooke and Crystal and um, the whole team is professional and collaborative and supportive. Um, and the, the unknown benefit that I never thought, even thought about, was the network of supportive women writers. And it's amazing how we all, you know, lift each other up. It's just an amazing, you know, benefit to, the, to this experience. And that's, you know, that we, you know, so I, I published several years ago. But I'm, you know, I'm still in, you know, I'm, I'm still one of the authors and I, I'm, you know, it's not distinguished whether, oh, well, when did you publish or when, you know, how many books do you have? It's, you know, you're, you're all part of the same organization and it's been really unequaled. Cindy, you had mentioned about the value of a blurb from a known writer. Oh. as being just a priceless thing, which is kind of, a, 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 I suppose, somewhat obvious. But in the She Writes architecture of other authors, um, is that present or is it missing? In other words, does She Write manage that second tier of authors or is She Writes gaining more and more the first tier authors? Are the first tier authors publishers addressing you snapping at their heels by adjusting the methods by which they accept and publish authors? Those are two questions, really. But And I guess for you, Brooke. So, so I'm not sure which, which question, the blurb thing or? Uh, so for, for you, is the network of people, are they mostly people who are first time published authors? Um, are they at that first tier level of authors in the mix? Uh, and as I say, there's a second question for Brooke, which is the, pu the traditional publishers, are they addressing you snapping at their heels? <laughs> oh. <laughs> you know, I'll, I'll say, um, I think that the traditional publishing world is very insular. Um, I, I think I've been pleasantly surprised to see that the traditional publishing world is very interested in what we're doing. Um, you know, and I, I think in some cases, like in the cases of agents, for instance, who can't find a home for books that they really care about, they're actually quite grateful that we exist. Um, and so I think that we are looked upon by the world of traditional publishing with a bit of curiosity. Um, and, and oddly enough, you know, the, the people that we seem to threaten actually is the self-publishing community. Um, and so, you know, it's kind of a hard space to be, you know, like in between this space where I sort of in, in my heart feel a little bit more aligned with self-publishing just in the sense of like the indie spirit. Um, but we, of course, are trying to be as much in the traditional milieu as possible because we want to be 
um, you know, taken as seriously as traditional publishing, and that's what we've been working for. And I think we've largely achieved that. So it's a, it is an interesting space to be, but, um, you know, there's certainly no shortage of authors who uh, aspire to publish with us. And so I'm very happy with where we are. I mean, it must make a financial difference to you if you had such authors as Jane with likely a good volume of sales um, and that Jane would have you show up as you did uh, as a credible possible potential uh, method of publishing um, is, uh, I guess, a credit to your restricting and maintaining the quality of your brand by being somewhat selective. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I think the selectivity is important. And to Jane's point about our cover um, program, you know, the covers are it is incredibly meaningful to have covers that people look at and are saying, you know, wow, those are gorgeous covers. I mean, it, it matters to booksellers a lot. Um, and so all of those things, um, and then our authors are also go-getters. I mean, that's another piece of it is, you know, a lot of them have a tremendous amount of energy, um, you know, a lot of wherewithal to get the word out about their own, their own books. And so we're, we're quite lucky, you know, we have a lot of things going for us. I know in our last conversation, Jane, you mentioned a particular couple who were marketeers before they were authors and were able to bring their marketing to their publishing and it totally moved their products to a whole nother level. Well, I, and I think that that's the real misnomer about self-publishing. People think it's incredibly easy, which it is logistically to throw up a book on Amazon, but, but you don't realize the amount of marketing and the money and that you actually have to spend to make a difference in the world is, is really big, which is where something like She Writes Press is so interesting because they have the experience. They're, they're also sifting, they're acting as gatekeepers, which of course all the traditional publishers do um, and, and are bringing that experience to the table. Given the advance that's paid in a traditional book publishing deal, which is dependent upon your last book deal from, again, our last conversation. If you did not make the advance, if you didn't uh, sell out to, to recover, recoup, um, that that will impact you. Is it one of those things where as a, a known author, if you have a dud, you go and prove yourself with sales and then, and then come back for the advance next time, do you think? I, don't, I know people who have done that, um, but... Uh, I, I honestly don't know. I mean, I, as she says, out of contract with a new book. <laughs> I'm going to do with it in these COVID times because it actually I have two new books, which is, which is really bizarre. Um, but uh, I, I certainly know people who have done it. I know people who have left the, the big publishers and been really, really happy with, with hybrid publishing. Um, you know, I think as with everything in life, we're, we're going through this seismic change and, and it takes a while to adjust and to know how to move forward. So we shall see. As a known author, is it something that you have as like a negotiating threat to the publisher? It used to be. It used to be everything. You know, publishers would pay to have you in their stable. And I think now um, what I've really seen is that people, it, it's all based, it's based on your last book sales and your your current book. So so now, you know, even really well-known established best-selling authors have to provide a very detailed proposal, you know, pages and pages, dozens of pages. Um, it's not enough to just say, hey, you know, it, James Patterson, it, it's you actually have to provide the book proposal excuse me and um i mean there there are more factors that they take into account now so literary agents we had a conversation and i really got clear how uh like a great trade tip of if you have a book of a certain genre go find a book of that genre look at the front cover find the literary agent contact them they'll be happy to take a look and they will know where to place it are you, as she writes, receiving such uh, from literary agents? I think you mentioned that you are receiving 
books mm -hmm. that they know they can't place but wish to? Sometimes, I mean, we, I, I wouldn't say the majority of our submissions come from agents, but we have probably on any given season, maybe one or two agented authors. Uh, and more often it's the case that the author is bringing their agent along. You know, so the author is saying, I'm kind of tired of this game um, and I'm ready to, you know, have the agency and take it into my own hands. And so um, that's, that, that does happen. Hmm. So Ian, if this is a sea change in publishing for all of you, what's next? It's like one year hence, we finally got rid of a pandemic <laughs> and uh, so-called normalcy returns. Is there something seismic, as Jane used the word, that's going to change in publishing? Or is it that you, Brooke, are going to have she writes become more aligned around the traditional press? Or is the traditional press going to morph? Or is there room for vanity press hybrid and traditional and it'll stay that way now yeah i mean and i you know in terms of that word vanity i prefer the word service provider you know that there are service providers out there who are very explicitly saying we're just going to do these services for you the reason that we're a hybrid publisher is because we act like a publisher you know we have all of these mechanisms in place in fact to get the books out into the market i mean we will never be a traditional press because i don't want to be i come out of traditional publishing it's not my goal to be a traditional press um and I think my my big goal has always been for independent publishing across the board, including self-published authors, to really rise together to say, you know, what matters is the book. It doesn't matter how you publish. What matters is that the book stands on its own because there are amazing self-published books and there are horrendous traditionally published books. <laughs> And so I find it problematic that the stigma lies with the model regardless of the model, right? So that's, that's my sort of big vision change. I've been doing this now for eight years. So to me, it doesn't feel like a seismic shift. To me, it feels like I've been in the trenches for eight years, you know, fighting for this thing to have legitimacy. And there's a sense of having arrived at that that feels very rewarding. Um, I don't really think that publishing needs to have infighting or scarcity thinking. I think that we as authors are all on the same page. We're all on the same team, you know, and so the more that we can support one another, that would be the seismic shift, you know, that that we're, we're all doing this for the love of writing, for the love of stories. Um, and so, you know, my hope is that our model, because of course that's what I, I care about, I think about every day, just continues to have as many opportunities, as many doors open to it, and all the only way that's going to happen is for us to keep publishing great books. And Cindy, having gone through the process, when's your next one? <laughs> I'm working on it. I'm working on it. <laughs> um, I've had a couple of things come up in my life, so I've put it on hold, but I'm definitely working on a couple of projects and I'm definitely going to go with, well, I'm going to submit to She Writes Press. You know, we'll see if they, if I get accepted, but um, definitely because I just, like I said, I just, I love the, I love the experience. Um, the experience for me has made a huge difference just for who I am as a person. And I don't want to, I, I don't want to try something else. I want to, I want to, go with the people who I trust and, and knowing that they respect my work as much as I would hope it would be respected. Okay, but Cindy, I don't want it to be flip-flops after 90, all right? We need to get <laughs> something happening here a little sooner. And Jane, what have you, I mean, have you learned something from this conversation? I, I think it's just reinforced what I already believe, which is that, that there are so many other ways. There is not just one way anymore. And I think that's that's really the thing, that for years and years, we thought there was only one way to get published. And I, I truly believe now, we, you know, especially listening to Brooke and, and hearing her talk about She Writes, that there are there are many ways of getting published. And and I, 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 I just want to reiterate, I really like hybrid publishing because of the gatekeepers. Um, I think it, it's, it's still important that somebody is there saying, yes, this is, this is worthy of being published. 
on that note, I bid you all a fond farewell. Keep writing and keep publishing. Thank you. And cheers. Thank you. Cheers. Oh, and, <laughs> thank you. Cheers with my empty glass. Yeah. <laughs> thank you so much. Cindy and Brooke, lovely to see you both. Thank you. Yeah, thank you very much. Thank Brooke, you, Brooke. Thanks for inviting me. Yeah, thank you. It was thank wonderful. you, Brooke. Thank you, Cindy, and thank you, Jane. Thank you, David.